The advice that Charlie is going to give us today is really about how do you think about applying to business school as an international, and then once you've gotten in, what do you need to know before you enter the recruiting process? Hello and welcome back to MBA Monday. I'm Angela Guido, the founder of Career Protocol. And today we are talking to all of you international students. Those of you who are crossing borders to pursue your MBA and potentially your post MBA career. Today I have with me our chief international officer, Charlie Taylor. Hello, everyone. Angela, so fabulous to be back here with you again. I always love being on MBA Mondays with you. Today, also you with the goddess hair. So exciting to be here. This topic is one of our most requested topics. And what you're all telling us is, help, I'm changing countries to get my MBA and potentially also my post-MBA job. What do I need to know? What do I do? So Charlie is with us today to answer all of your questions about pursuing an MBA abroad. Before we hear Charlie's super awesome wisdom, take a moment and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell as they say, so that you don't miss a single MBA Monday or make Mondays better. We are also doing career advice on this channel, and today we're actually gonna be doing both. So the advice that Charlie is gonna give us today is really about how do you think about applying to business school as an international, and then once you've gotten in, what do you need to know before you enter the recruiting process? Because Carly, Charlie is also our favorite MBA career coach for our international clients. So Charlie, uh, as folks are thinking about changing geographies, going to a different country for their MBA, what are the things that they really need to be sure they have buttoned down in their application itself? Oh, Angela, such an important question. And so it's so exciting for us all to talk about this. We know that people who are uh, going off to do um, MBAs abroad and looking to develop themselves internationally, career-wise, personally, otherwise, are just such incredibly brave souls. And um, a brave soul and a big dream is what we need and welcome here today. And so Starting off with that big dream, it's really thinking deeply about um, more so than almost anybody else right out of the gate, having that real clarity around goals. And one of the, the wonderful things that, that we offer, Angela, that, that gorgeous um, career uh, roadmap and career game plan that you've put together for our students, it's an opportunity for people to go really deep and look at what it is they want to do, their values that drive them. And these are things that even if you're not working with us, think about this really really deeply because it's going to be the basis of the conversations that you have with people. So if you go into these conversations with so much clarity, you are already at the top of the game. Charlie's absolutely right. Your career goals are for you. They are not for the admissions committee. However, you do really, as she points out, you really have to keep your audience in mind. And so schools know that international students have fewer options because not every company will sponsor a visa and they're competing with equally qualified native speakers and locals of whatever country you're recruiting in. So they know that you're going to have to do a bit more work to get the job that you want. And if you can show them to Charlie's point, that you've already done a lot of that thinking, that working and that networking, they're going to feel a lot more confident enabling you to invest the money you're going to invest in their MBA program, because then they feel confident that you're going to get the return on that investment. They're really looking out for you. They don't want you to come to their country, invest thousands and thousands of dollars, and then like be left without a job at the end. They're really thinking about your future. So you need to show them that you've also done that thinking. You've done much more thinking than they have and planning and networking. And this is why, as Charlie first said, your career game plan as an international needs to be super tight. 
This is also really important as you're applying. Of course, we never do this um, for the sake of the ad com. We first do this work for our own clarity. But the benefit is when the ad com really understands that you have that level of clarity, that you've done that homework, it makes your case so much stronger. They know that you're going to also have to work twice as hard to find that placement. And so if you're able to do the networking now, if you have that clarity now they have faith and confidence in you that you're going to be able to do that in business school and going forward so that's really one of the first really big things and one of the the other things that we want you to think about a lot too and this is a part of that your career leap so we talked a little bit about this before in a previous um in a previous episode but you know oftentimes international students may be taking a whole variety of career leaps they might be you know crossing functions or they might be crossing industries. And if you're an international student, oh my gosh, that is just making you a triple jumper. And so you really have to have your game plan on. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know what a triple jumper is, when we talk about your post MBA career game plan, you wanna think both in terms of what you really wanna do and in terms of what is the most feasible path forward. And the right answer is somewhere at the union of those two things. Don't lie, don't say you wanna go down a path that you're trying to get off of, but also don't put forward career goals that are totally unachievable from where you are plus an MBA. A safe way to go is to change either industry or function, but not both. Add a third dimension to that of geography, and you really want to make sure that the plan you're putting forward makes it likely that you're going to be able to make that move. So it's going to be unlikely that a firm is going to hire you in a different geography, a different industry, and a different function because you're just not really qualified yet for that job. So make sure that as you are planning your essays, your personal statements, and your goals, you're thinking really realistically in terms of what you're going to be most likely to be able to achieve post-MBA and address that in your personal statement. It's so true. They really feel that they have such a duty of care to each and every one of their students. Um, the other thing, too, we want to think that ad com, ad comers, because of that, um, and also because they have myriad pressures on getting it right um, in admissions, um, that, that's why they're also maybe a little leery of, of triple jumpers. But this is where your due diligence comes in. Having as many conversations with people as you possibly can before, during, and after. So even even before you get to business school, as you're learning about the schools, also think about this as a wonderful opportunity for you to do informational career interviews, um, connect with people on um, through the career lens, not just getting into the MBA lens. Remember, every single person that you connect with, it's not just for admissions into a particular business school, but go in with the mindset that you are creating a, a, a community, a network for life. And if you want to know more about how to do that, read Angela's amazing book, How to Network Without Feeling Like an A-Hole. Now that my now that my kid knows how to read that title, um, he thinks he can say a-hole all the time. Thank you very much, Angela Guido. But it is just a super critical thing um, that you want to do. And also, um, you know, if you meet people along the way who have taken a path that you're looking to take, to be able to share that information with the ad comms, so they know it's not an unblazed trail. It is something realistic and something very possible. It also, more importantly, gives you peace of mind as well. So it's really important. But I love also this idea of being really flexible, Angela. You know, the whole um, the whole thing about, you know, look, if you're if you're coming all of this way, keep your mind open and be locationally agnostic. OK, so, Charlie, as international applicants are applying, I think the message is incredibly clear. They have to really focus in on their career game plans and make sure that they are airtight. We have a ton of videos on this channel. We pretty much never shut up about the career game plan. So check out some of the many videos in the description down below. And then we'll have Johnny link at least one right here that will take you to career game planning videos because that's essential to your application as an international applicant who's crossing borders 
uh, and applying to business school. Other than that, Charlie, would you agree that pretty much the same rules apply? You need to show that you're a great person, got to have great statistics. You know, you really need to show your authentic self in your essays. You need to be prepared for the interviews. You need to research the schools and show school fit. All the rest is really the same. The one thing that gets a little bit of extra pressure is that career game plan and your employability post MBA, the relevance of an MBA to your goals and whether or not you're going to get a return on that investment. So let's assume that they followed our advice. They got into business school. Now, what do they need to be thinking about as they're about to begin business school? So you're now making the transition to MBA student. What do internationals need to know? Well, one of the really exciting things once you get into business school is you're going to find that the universe just explodes. You've come in with a really, really strong game plan, but you might find that there are things that you never even consider that start opening up. So be a little bit open and flexible as well to possibilities and opportunities, particularly when it comes to locations. You might think, oh, I just want a bite of that big apple. And then you might find that actually the industry pulls you to the sunny climes of California and um, be open to that. It's kind of a very exciting part of the adventure. The other bit of this, too, is be open internationally as well. You know, Angela, one of the, the things that we've seen over the last couple of years um, all over the world is um, just how quickly visa, the visa situation can change for international students. Sometimes that has been you know, on the verge of, you know, really catastrophic. And sometimes it's been really exciting opening up tons of opportunities. And so it's important that no matter what, we always keep our eye on the ball. And, you know, at Career Protocol, I love one of the things that we do, and that is to really help all of our students, particularly our international students, prepare with a plan B and sometimes a plan C or a plan D. So in case they need to make these kinds of shifts or have this flexibility, they've got that in their thinking already. They're empowered and they're, they're, um, they're responding rather than reacting. And that's really important, particularly when we're talking about the visa situation. But it's also very exciting because, you know, as an international student, if you want to even gain deeper international experience and you're in B school and you think maybe you want to go and work in Europe, um, there are some visa challenges to doing that, but go and do international programs, do uh, do international exchange programs. We're finding that countries like the United Kingdom that want to attract more international students, kind of more brain power, develop those um, connections to other cultures and countries in the wake of Brexit, are opening up really interesting visa pathways. So students who attend really excellent top schools in some countries can gravitate and do some work in the United Kingdom. So you can check out all kinds of options if you're willing to be flexible. Yeah, so flexibility is definitely the mantra and it's related to everything that Charlie has already said. Um, companies who want to hire international uh, employees have to deal with a visa challenge. Some companies won't be willing to do it. Others will be willing to do it, but they have to invest a lot. It makes you a riskier hire and the job that you really want may not be available for whatever reason. Either they don't sponsor a visa or they don't have room in the New York office where you want to sit. So the idea is to look to maximize the return on your MBA investment by number one, getting a job that pays you well post MBA if you need to pay off your student loans. Number two, sets you firmly on a track for success in the long term, which means teaches you a lot, gives you experience capital that you could parlay into future jobs after your first job post MBA. And the third thing that you have to keep in mind is Charlie's favorite word, flexibility. If the more flexible you can be geographically uh, in terms of where you go, the more opportunities you will find. So if you are moving to the US and you are hoping to be in New York, as Charlie points out, so many people do, those are the hardest jobs to get because everyone wants to be in New York. If you're willing to go to Dallas or Atlanta or Minneapolis, you will potentially find even more opportunities that will very well satisfy points one and two. So keep an open mind as you approach the opportunities for your MBA internship and your post MBA job. If you're in a position where you need visa sponsorship and therefore you have more limited options than someone who doesn't need a visa. 
Any closing words for these guys, Charlie? You know, um, just going back to that theme of being brave souls, one of the really exciting things is um, in the United States, the international students kind of by and large, you have maybe about 30% of the class um, on average will be uh, would, will be filled with international students. So you have kind of an advantage in some ways, right? That you get this opportunity to really be kind of unique in the crowd and to showcase and demonstrate that you have some really interesting experiences and perspective to bring to the Table, not just to the class, but to your future employers as well. Being an international student, my friend, is an advantage. Wave that advantage proudly. It's exciting. And kudos to you for taking this big leap. It's amazing. We need more brave souls. And that is why Charlie is our chief international officer. If you are an international MBA applicant, you are the exact person that Charlie wants to work with as a coach. So don't forget, if you want to talk to us, about working together on your MBA application dreams. And in particular, if you wanna work with Charlie, which I really recommend if you are pursuing an international MBA, click the link below and request a free consultation and ask to talk to Charlie. She's not only the expert in international MBAs, she's also one of the top 20 MBA admissions consultants from 2021, last year, whatever it was, in Poets and Quants, because she's awesome. How awesome is Charlie? Be sure to leave Charlie a comment and thank her for her time today. We just love getting your input on this show, Charlie. Thank you so much. I always love connecting and hanging out with you. You are the best. Thank you. Back at you, lady. See y'all next week. This is... Okay, this is... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And scene.